the, the, the precision in order that it does not increase too much. Okay, because I haven't said, but we have a kind of, I, I, I don't want to return to these details, but uh, you, have, you have a theorem in, uh, in PID, you can prove a theorem in PID called theory saying that if the Kissing module so it is known over S nu, then it lifts uniquely over S. If nu is not so large, it's sufficiently small with a very explicit power. So it's it's uh, it's, it's it's harmless to to, to 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 replace this S by S nu, at least for if nu is not so big. Okay, and what, what I'm what, what I'm trying to say is that um, uh, for, for, to 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 explain to implement this formula, I just uh, it's not very important to to so. I, 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 the, um, I can say, um, so, so, so the main issue are in the, 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 the modules and not the frobenius. So of course I, I, I need to apply to, to reiterate the frobenius, but the, something, the, the thing I, I really <coughs> want to do is to compute this, uh, this max and this sum. But here, I am, um, uh, at the end of this process, I end up with a, with a module of S1, which is equipped, of course, with a Frobenius, because I, I, I make it, uh, I, I, I make my length is stable, and uh, to this module is, the, is associated the Galois representation, which is T over PT. And I want to compute the semi-simplification. And the semi-simplification, of course, it's not the semi-simplification as just uh, a, a module over S1. <coughs> because as a module over S1, it's just, uh, it's just free. Oh, yeah. And so the semi-simplification uh, tells you nothing about the Galois representation. And so it's really the semi-simplification as a free module. I want to compute the, the subspace uh, which are stable under the free module, uh, under the free action. And so now I really, I really want to do, so it's the reason why uh, uh, in the previous uh, sections, I, I put in parentheses around feed. Now I really, uh, I, I, I really need to take into account this action, this feed action. Okay. And um, so, how do you study this? Uh, so um, maybe I should I should have said that uh, the um, all the. Um, all what I've all, all said before about uh, modules over S and modules over S1 over P is a, is a joint work with David Lemich. And uh, this part is a, is a work of Jeremy LeBron, it's not mine. And it's uh, this his PhD thesis. And, okay, so after. <coughs> okay. And. So I have just five minutes to explain this. So the idea is just to, the idea is basically to say that a few module defined about this ring S1, a few module defined about any, any ring is just described by a skew polynomial. So what is a skew polynomial? So you need to have a, a, a ring R and, uh, and a number of them of R. And the ring R of x sigma is just the, 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 the classical ring of polynomials, but with a multiplication <coughs> given by the following rule. When you have x times a constant a, you agree to say that it's just sigma of a times x. So you have a, a, a twist. And when you have a, a, a phi module over, over R, a sigma module over R, you can pick, say, uh, uh, D. You can pick x in D and consider the sequence x, p of x, etc. p square of x, etc. Uh, sigma, sorry. <coughs> and uh, try to find a, 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 
if R is a field, say, try to find a linear, uh, a, a linear combination between these numbers. So sigma d of x is a0x plus a1x plus a1 sigma of x plus that, 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 plus x d minus 1 sigma d minus 1 of x, of x. right? And when you have such a relation, you can just consider the polynomial. Uh, x, to, x to the power d minus a d minus 1, x to the power d minus 1 minus a1 x minus a0. But this, you, you, this polynomial should really be thought as an element of the skew, skew polynomial uh, uh, ring and not the r of x itself. And when you can prove it, at, at least if r is a field, is that uh, the factorization of this polynomial corresponds to the, 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 the decomposition of the two modules as, a, uh, I mean, the, 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 the composition sequence of the two module. Sequence of composition. Yeah. Anyway, and so the, 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 the question is just to find a good algorithm to, fa to factorize a polynomial over this kind of, of, uh, of rings. So actually, you can doing a, 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 some some work. You can assume that you can replace S one in our in our precise situation by k of uh, u, where k is a residue field of uh, big K. So actually, S one is just k of u. And that means I can invert you with standard stuff the result. And so it's a field, and you can apply the theory. And over this field, we have, um, uh, for few modules over this field, we have a, a kind of slope theory. It's not the same that uh, the, the slope theory for um, for uh, few modules about the rubber ring, for instance, but it's, uh, it's more or less uh, uh, the same ideas. And so you have a kind of slope theory. So slope are not integer, but are, uh, um, um, integer modulo some uh, uh, rational numbers modulo some equivalence relations. Anyway, so you have a kind of slope theory, and using this slope theory, you can reduce yourself to the k to few modules of k, and not k of u. So you can assume that it's enough now to, to study um, uh, few modules uh, scoop polynomials over a finite field, and then sigma is just the power of forbidden, some power of forbidden. And uh, actually, this skew polynomials were already studied by uh, Gisbrecht, for instance, for, by many people, but Gisbrecht has designed an algorithm uh, for factorizing this polynomial of a finite field. And so uh, it's more or less answered answer all the questions. So with this, let, let, let me just summarize quickly. Uh, we have uh, this few module of S1 give, uh, obtained by reduction modulo P of the lattice you have found before. And um, you compute this uh, polynomial, which is, uh, the, we can be called the semi characteristic polynomial. It can be found as a, as a characteristic polynomial. So you compute it. Oh, you, can do, you can do something slightly different, but in some, uh, at the end, it's it's the same as computing this polynomial. You uh, use a slope theory to reduce this polynomial to, 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 to get rid of this, of this variable u. And then you use Gisbrecht theorem or some optimization of Gisbrecht theorem to uh, find the factorization of this polynomial and then conclude and find the semi simplification. So it's a basic idea. And, uh, and I, I just wanted, I mainly wanted to insist on the algorithmics appearing behind the scene. And uh, anyway, and um, OK, so uh, be before concluding, I just want to mention that um, during the side days, um, we have worked in uh, implementing this algorithm as a stage. So um, some work has been done in, uh, uh, by David and, and Tristan, uh, mainly, for um, uh, implementing algorithm for um, 
uh, to manipulate module over S and S1 over P. I've done a bit uh, for um, uh, this, um, cor this correspondence between the two point of view. Uh, the, the first one is, uh, is uh, the point of view for uh, modules over S1 over P. I mean that uh, the first one uh, I remember is a classical point of view with a matrix of generators. The second is a point of view, shift point of view. So I, I, I have some code to, 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 to go from one to the other and the other direction also. And uh, with Jeremy, we have uh, implemented the factorization of the, of the scoop number of a finite field. So it's, it's not worked. So it's in progress. <laughs> It's not completely terminated. It's comp not completely finished, but it's worth of many polynomials. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Are there any questions? So, uh, sorry. Out of curiosity, the, this uh, introduction it is raised with a new. And then, I mean, you presented them as a, a computational device. So. Uh, is, there, is there a also theoretical counterpart? Or? So, um, yeah, uh, I, I mean, uh, this ring arises naturally in, uh, in rigid geometry, for instance, because there's a ring of convergence series of our, of our disk. Um, actually, um, if new is not an integer, the, this ring are not very, are not so, um, what do you say? Um, so for instance, if new, if new is an integer of new equals zero, we have E1 over sphere M. And we know that the ring are um, uh, uh, regular of dimension two, for instance, and so on. If new is no, is no longer an integer, then it's no longer true. And so uh, the study in the almost ther theoretic point of view is, uh, is um, much more important. I don't know, I, 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 I haven't found a precise result on this on this particular ring S new, I know that it was it was studied, but in very more general context in rigid geometry, for instance, and so on. It's but I don't know. If it's what is what more. Yeah, is the problem with S new that it's not an Ethereum? When ah, it's it's not no, no, it is. It still is. It's still an Ethereum. It's, it's, it's still an Ethereum. Yeah. It just it's somehow not. It's like somehow not binary type in some sense anymore. No, I, I think it is. It's not, uh, so uh, I choose new and uh, uh, a rational number, for instance. I would say it's better. New is rational, but still, uh, okay. We're not but it's enough for the application. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, in that case, then, okay, it's still reasonable. But, but it's, okay. uh, it's a kind of... It's just not regular. Usually. It's, it's, not, it's just a regular also. And so you don't have the other aspiro because it doesn't apply in this context, and you have to modify the bits. But it, if, if, if instead of S new, you consider S new uh, bracket, uh, some, and you extract some power of... Of the, of the uniformizer that it becomes. But we, so th th this ring uh, are maybe uh, more interesting from the theoretic point of view, but for an algorithm point of view, it's not, it's not so good because we don't have to work with as a sector data because this, this denominator can be very, very, very large and we don't have to, to, to waste a lot of money and time to, uh, money, a lot of stuff. Time and space <laughs> 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 uh, to, to, to work with this ring. So we really need a, a few of us. Any other questions? So when this appears in Sage, what, what will the class be called? How is it structured? Well, it's not so clear. <laughs> so I think the right thing to do is to implement a class function for filter PN modules. A class for modules over S, a class for modules over S1 over P, <coughs> a class for skew polynomials, and so on. But um, do we need to implement a specific class for Kizin module, for instance? Or probably yes. But, uh, so, so far we have just uh, implemented a class for skew polynomials and modules over S and S1 over P. So we are, we are doing this. It's not, it's, it's not, uh, okay. not completed. <laughs> it's in progress. All right, let's thank Zabi uh, again.